Welcome, Prowl Nation. Lunchtime Detroit to Lions Saw coming at you. It's brought to you by Lions Nation Unite. Goffs, gaffs, the defense sucks. Questionable calls by Dan Campbell. But first, I need to bring in my main man, the man of steel himself, Kurt Steele. What up, though? Welcome to the show, people. You know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the Prowl. You're home for Detroit Lions news and rumors. And if you haven't looked already, it's Manscaped Mondays. We're brought to you today by Manscaped. <laughs> So, you know, we're going to do some ads today. You go check it out, you know, get yourself some Manscaped gear. But, hey, you know, we got to talk about this game. Oof, what a blunder. But before we get into any of all that stuff, click the subscribe button. Join Proud Nation. Hey, we need you on this March to 10,000. So, like I said, get on this bus trust or get on the ride, Clyde. But I got to bring in the third man of the crew. You know him. The ladies love him. Mr. <laughs> LL Cool Tones. What's up, my dude? Was am, was am. Uh, good morning, Proud Nation, and happy Monday. Hey, let's get this thing started right now. Let go. Detroit Lions talk, baby. We're going to get up, and on the way up, we're going to buy the kneecap off. Yes, sir. We in the deep. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. We're going to start out this one. I'm going to kick it over to my main man, Kurt. Hey, so the game yesterday, there were some questionable things that Dan Campbell did in this game. I, I know he wants to be aggressive, but sometimes you have to take the points. Got in the red zone, had some issues, didn't kick field goals, went forth on, on fourth down, and it's the rhythm just wasn't there for us to go forward on fourth down. I count like three times we could have kicked field goals. That's nine points. That gets us a lot closer to them. That's a one point game. You look at those those questionable, you know, decisions to kind of go forward on fourth down. And I'm like, come on, man. I understand you want to be aggressive, but sometimes you just got to take the points, man. You can't leave points on the on the board. Uh, you look at Dan Campbell and look at this coaching staff, and I look at the team holistically. And I was like, and I said this the other day. I said, are the Lions taking? the bears too lightly because of the performance they had against the, the Browns. And I'm like, eh, I, I was like, I don't, I don't think he's going to let them that, do that. I don't, you know, coach and staff not going to have them looking past anyone, but that's the that performance definitely showed that they were kind of looking past the bears. And I was like, you can't look past any team in the NFL. I think that that was our, that was our chance to get our first win. And we just blew it. I mean, I was just like, and that was just, and, and I hate to say this, but, same that was the same old Lions type of performance right there because you you took a, a, a opportunity to go ahead and set yourself up for success and and probably the least talented team on offense that we faced and we let them just kind of just run rough rough shot over us the whole game i'm like and and we're lucky with a couple of blunders by them that it wasn't a, a bigger score i just uh, i didn't understand the coaching by dan campbell in this game uh as much as I love Motor City Dan Campbell, I can't give him any passes on this one. This was just a poor uh, coaching effort on, on his part. Four o'clock management, poor decisions to go for it on fourth down. Dan Campbell, baby, you got to do better for this one, man. That uh, you know, I'm even wearing the same hat he was wearing yesterday. Uh, but I, I can't even. I can't. There's no excuse for what went on in that game yesterday. Just too many mistakes, uh, shooting ourselves in the foot, penalties, turnovers. I, it was just a bad, bad performance and. Bad coaching as well. I, I I haven't seen this this group collectively coach this bad as a collective uh, so far this year. What you got, uh, Jim? Um, <clears throat> I'm done with Jared Goff. Uh, it's four games. I know it's a small sample size, but no, no, this is not the quarterback of the future for us. Um, the checkdown champion is is a Super Bowl winner. Or no, a Super Bowl. You know, he been to the Super Bowl. He's won playoff games. Um, and his, his stat line is not bad. 299 yards, 24 for 38, two touchdowns, woo -woo, you know, 7.9 yard average. No, this guy is awful. Absolutely awful. Three fumbles, two lost. Um, every, it seems like in the big plays, he, he misses throws. It's, it's either his first look or that's it. And you know what? I, I've tried to give him a pass and I've tried to, you know, be accepting of him, but guess what? It's over. <laughs> there is no more for me on this guy. I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. Um, yeah. 
he just doesn't make good decisions. Uh, A lot of the fourth downs were left up to him and you see what happened there for me. We do need to get another quarterback. I don't think it's going to be this year's draft, although we're trending towards the number one pick again. (laughs) But I I just, I'm so angry because of the fact that I knew this team wasn't going to be good. I got that, you know, and we all wanted Jared Goff to work out so we could just fix this defense. But I, I totally believe we need to go out and do something drastic. And I'm, I'm going to suggest something and people are going to go, no, 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 we shouldn't do that. Uh, Deshaun Watson's out there. Go get him. And you know what? It, I can't even really blame one of those fumbles on him. I don't know what the hell we're Frank. I'm like, you have a, a all world center. He just snapped the ball. Jared Goff was do, checking the protections and to go back uh, really to, and, and one of those things that uh, with the play calling, uh, with Anthony Lynn is that why were you calling passes when you have for you got you got Jamal Williams and you got DeAndre Swift you can put and we were running the ball well I don't understand why we were throwing the ball on fourth and one then don't, don't get it um don't that's it. it's even if it is a pass play it's just make it an easier pass like on that one to, uh to I'm a rock on the sideline, I think it was in the fourth quarter, like they they tried to put it on him. And maybe it was. They said he didn't come out his break as hard as he should have. That's why the ball was out in front of him or whatever it is. So, but it's just everything has to go right for that pass to 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 work. You know what I'm saying? And it's always, of course, hindsight is 2020, but I don't know if you ever if you ever look at it, if you ever see it when they show the play. When it's incomplete over here, somebody's always coming open over the field. Yeah, Cephas was wide open. On the, I was just yeah. going to say, on that play, it was Cephas. He's just standing there like, uh. But um, this was a bad game. Um, this was one of those, uh, you know, flush it and let's try to forget about it. Like, you know, a lot of those other games, like even though it was bad, we could say, well, this was a good thing and this was a good thing. It wasn't too many good things out of this one. Um, I'll, I'll share a quote. From uh from our own uh Ferg Lions five hundred five that's Big Ferg, um he said on Twitter yesterday it's hard to sign it's hard to silence the same old Lions narrative when you dump gas on it and provide the match. I refuse <laughs> to say same I refuse to say same old Lions, but I'm not mad anymore if you do. I'm yeah. almost there with it. Like I can, because I mean yeah. I wouldn't even say almost there with it. I could understand it if you've been saying it this whole season. This just looked like the same old Lions because they kind of have. But, you know, it's just been incremental differences that I've been, knowing, you know, just the fight and everything like that. I don't think they gave up yesterday. So that was, you know, a positive. But that it was just a bad game overall. Too they didn't give mistakes. up, but they never started. <laughs> yeah. Um, fourth down play calling. We gave up that early fourth down to the Bears. It's just it's so many things. You know, it just not to sound like, you know, just the, I guess the hopeful Lions fan, but it's, you know, or sound redundant is but. It's so many small things that help that game go high and win. If we just change a few of those, the game looked completely different to me. And a lot of those is, is just fourth down. Easier play calls on fourth down is what we need. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, not to mention the blunders we got on the other side of the ball. What you got with, with the other side of the ball? Hell, hell. Um, One thing is at one point I was watching, I just, they like they showing Dan Campbell, of course, you know, because, you know, the, the situation, the team is doing whatever it's doing. But I see Derek Barnes standing next to him. And so, <laughs> that's part of the reason. I think that's a big part of the reason why things go how they go. Because whenever whenever he goes, whenever he comes in, you can notice it's like a – I don't want to say it's all on him, but it's a shift in the physicality. Like, you know, whenever he's there, whenever he's around the ball, you hit him pads popping. You know, he finishes plays. I don't – I don't know. I said it last week. I borrowed a quote from uh, from Mike Mayak, Mike Mayak, sorry, years ago when he was on uh, NFL Network. But he said, uh, you know, he would always say, is it the X's and O's or is it the Jimmy's and Joe's? And right now, I'm, I'm, I think it's a combination. I think it's a big combination of the two. I think it's bad schemes. I think it's bad players, too. Mm-hmm. I, I have to agree with you on that. It's just, yeah, sometimes you got to put your best players in, you know, and right now, I just think that. Uh, Derek Barnes is one of our best players that's not getting a lot of run. We have a lot of rookies playing, but we're not playing him. But I don't understand what the reasoning behind that. Yeah. yeah. A lot of our a lot of our rookies came down to earth in this in this game. Um mm-hmm. we underestimated the Bears. I think yeah, all of us I think did. We really did. I think and we did. I'm struggling to see where that first win comes from now. Yeah. 
Minnesota is a good team. Yeah. And uh, that, I think that one's on the road. That's going to be, be Minnesota. That'd be the game we come out and look like how we've been thinking we should look like. And then, well, we, uh, we have, this was the uh, game we thought that was going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Had, but, you're right. But, the, but we did this. We did our usual. I think this was just the same old Lions game. I think that was the one that we just kind of overlooked uh, looking forward to t- taking on Minnesota. And we really just screwed the pooch on this one. I hate to say it. <laughs> All right. Yep. Hey, if you like this video content, hey, like the video, share the video, comment on the video. Hey, we're brought to you today by Manscaped. Who's is the best? men's below the waist grooming champion of the world it's got to be manscape offering precision engineer tools uh to help your family jewels i'm i'm the <laughs> hey um uh, you know they have products uh out there they just launched this their fourth generation lawnmower trimmer uh for you know for you know yeah uh, your manly parts down there so go over there and check it out they have a um they have a shaving with a sleek well-designed optimized trimmer uh making your shaving time uh, the favorite time in your bathroom okay so for me uh, definitely i haven't used that one yet but i have used the the uh the weed whacker you know go in there got those nose hairs uh went in there got those ears hairs and the deodorant is freaking awesome i love mm-hmm. the deodorant keep your fresh <laughs> down there you know it get hot down here in the summers in north carolina you know keep your dry and everything like that keep your, your family jewels nice and cool throughout the day uh what do you guys got on some of these manscape products man i'll tell you what the lawnmower doesn't cut you like other things do um i'm a i'm a manscaper you know i got a wife so we got to take care of her so <laughs> <laughs> so i'm a manscape uh, man, but man, is the, I mean, no nicks, no cuts, no nothing. I mean, it's very smooth. It, it's a very smooth trimmer. So, man, you guys, it is the best thing on the market. Uh, the the uh, RPMs on this is amazing. And you guys got to go out and get one. The promo code, you get 20% off when you use D- D- D-L-O-T, uh, shoot. P. When you use... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, Kurt, because uh, I O-T-P. don't even know the promo code. The, code uh, the promo code is D-L-O-T-P, or, you know, it's the short for Detroit Lions on the prowl. So yes. use D-L-O-T-P for that 20%. <laughs> Please use line. that one and not the one I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> you should <laughs> be it. seeing that at the bottom of the yeah, screen definitely. anyway. <laughs> so go over there, check it out. What you got, man? Have you What, what have your experience with the products, LL? Yeah. Um, you know, I've used it. It, it, it can handle um, your beard. So, yeah you know you can uh you can you can trim it you can line it up you can do whatever you need to do um right. i actually cut some i i use it to cut hair with it too um uh we had a loss we had a death of the family and you know funeral proceedings and i use it to, to cut uh family members hair so it will do all the things that you need it to do yeah all right, your so. beard will no longer look weird <laughs> yeah definitely uh-huh. so go over there and get yourself some manscape uh the link is uh, definitely in the description and use that code uh d-l-o-t-p to get 20 percent off and free shipping at manscape.com all right so jim what's your family uh, discussion topic for today family discussion topic today is it, it uh, to be honest it's a sad day in in, in, in uh prowl nation i think it is i'm i'm a little down today because of that loss yesterday yeah. but what do you think will turn this team around and do not say burn it to the ground just, just give me some helpful real <laughs> solutions instead of sacrificing the forwards on an altar or something we, something realistic that we could change this team around and and you know what i mean but let's have let's have some fun with that topic. <laughs> definitely, definitely. All right, Jim, let's talk about the defense, man, because, you know, I want to get your take. You previewed the defense uh, oh. before, in the pregame show. So postgame, what was your assessment on the defense? Um, rookies will be rookies. Uh, I, in some ways, some of our rookies didn't play as well as I thought. Ali McNeil played well. I, I liked how he played. Um, Dean Marlowe, I thought, had a decent game. Some Julian Aquara sightings. But overall, this defense couldn't tackle anybody uh, out of position on a lot of plays. Bobby Price is showing he was a rookie. He, he, he returned to human form <laughs> for this game. Mm. And, and the one thing I have to say is Will Harris, what the heck are you doing here? <laughs> Why is he on our team? He is terrible as a, oh, this, the guy is really decent in the box. If you want somebody to go after and, and, and can attempt to tackle, he's perfect. 
But if you want him to cover anybody, you might as well forget it. He's got some coverage skills and he has some speed, but the IQ isn't there. He's lost on most plays. And to be honest, I can think, I can think of a lot of safeties that are better than him. And so can PFF because he's the second worst safety in the entire NFL. Wow. The he's second that high? worst. Yes. He's that PFF. High? Yeah. Yep. He's that he's high. I thought he was the worst. So he's no, he's no, above. he actually is above below him? someone. Yes. He's I'm not sure who that high. someone is. That's the <laughs> yeah. second worst. And I'm not a big worst. PFF guy. I'm going to be honest. I, I yeah. think there's a lot more intangibles that, that take place, mm -hmm. but uh, he's not very good to be honest. I don't think Tracy Walker is all that good either. I've said that before. Uh, his coverage skills aren't, aren't great either. Um, but we had, we had serious problems. We could not stop the run. We, I mean, we can't tackle. We'd have somebody in the backfield and they would just slip right through our fingers and keep going mm -hmm. scheme wise. I mean, they lost Romeo Aquara, which kind of hurt them. And that could be a significant injury. That is an Achilles injury. And that could be season ending. We're hearing they right. will know more today, but that hurt them a little bit. They have depth at those positions though. Austin Bryant played and it wasn't bad. I got some pass rush, you know, pass rush. Wasn't great. The pressure wasn't enough. Whatever they did with Lamar Jackson, they said, you know what? That was good for last week. Let's just throw that right out the window <laughs> and do whatever the hell we yeah. think. It was not a good defensive scheme. And I was thinking through the game. I was thinking that Aaron Glenn had been called on how to stop the Ravens, but I thought he should have called on how to stop the Bears. It, I, that's a good point because, you know, people were – I it's – I don't know. I, I think it's one of them games like we all might have just overestimated some things. I don't I don't really understand what happened. You know, it was it was like it was, you know, we I had so many expectations and they came out. And it was just like, what the hell? But, um, yeah. you know, defensively, like like Jim just said, we couldn't stop the run. Um, we gave up three rushing touchdowns. We gave up one hundred and eighty eight total rushing yards um, on thirty nine rushes. We couldn't really much run the ball. We only had 90 off of 25. Um, just momentum swings. We couldn't get a stop when we needed to stop at all, it seemed like. Uh, they. It, one thing that I noticed, well, one thing that they did, they swapped um, Peters and uh, Ifedi. Mm -hmm. um, so Ifedi played left and Peters played right. I, when I saw that, I'm, I'm like, ha-ha, oh, well. Like, look at what they're doing. This is desperate. And I guess it worked. So I don't know. It's, them. <laughs> it worked it, it all was, right. Whatever yeah. adjustment it was, we didn't. And we kind of, I think we, there was some adjustments, you know, come the second half, the team looked better, but it was only for a short time. Um, defensively, we just, we didn't look nearly as good as we have at any point this whole season. Yeah, definitely. Looking at this, at this game on the defense side of the ball, I just saw just a porous defense where we just didn't play up to our potential, you know, I'm looking at it like, come on, man, I know we're better against, against the run than this. Um, I know we can, you know, I know we can cover better than this. I mean, you got this kid, this rookie Mooney was just torching us. I mean, he was wearing us out. And, uh, and one thing I would have to say is definitely, I feel, I feel for, for uh, Ty Montgomery, uh, excuse me, not Montgomery, Ty Montgomery, but Montgomery for the, uh, the, the Bears, mm -hmm. uh, went out with an injury. Um, but Damian Williams yeah. is not a slouch. I mean, you got to remember that guy no, won a Super Bowl a couple of years ago with the, with the Kansas City Chiefs. So, you know, you, you take out one guy, you bring in another guy in that's just as stout. And, you know, he ran through us just, you know, just like Montgomery did. So, you look at this game and it's just like, eh, come on, man. You, you we have to play it, the intensity on our defense ones was not there in this game. That, that's what that's the thing I was missing in this game was the intensity. I had to say a few bright spots. Aline McNeil played very well, uh, you know, in, in the middle. Charles Harris played well. He's one of the guys, he got the strip sack, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus um uh uh what the boy name is <laughs> against Justin <laughs> Fields. Yeah. You, you look at that, you know. Some good things uh, did happen, but that, that, especially that first half, it was just like we were just out there just kind of just walking around in space. I mean, we had a whole team of uh, mm. of Jamie Collins on in the first half. Mm. We were just kind of just walking around with our head in the fog. It, it was just terrible. But Dan Campbell was going to have to do a better job. Uh, uh, Aaron Glenn, who's, who amazingly did a, a decent job this season, is going to have to do a better job. And 
my homie got to get it, got to get those boys right back there in the back of that secondary. Pleasant going to have to do a better job of coaching these young guys up. We know they're young, we know they're inexperienced, but you put them out there for a reason. So uh, you're going to have to either get them right or get some, you know, get some veteran in, veterans yeah, get in. Get somebody else. Uh, because this is going to be a really, really long season if we continue to be this uh, bad on defense like we were in today's game. Hey, you know, if you like the video, share the video, comment on the video. Make sure you get on the train, Wayne. Get on this bus, Gus, and ride. <laughs> get on this ride clock. Hey, get on the March of 10,000 with us right here on Detroit Lions on the Prowl. We need you, baby. And it's free. It's free, free. You don't need a discount a code to subscribe to the channel because it's free. You know what I'm saying? The discount code is just click the button. So let's go. <laughs> the offensive side of the ball. My man, LL, what you got? Um... Same thing, man, uh, or just – I shouldn't say same thing, but a continuation of some bad things. Just uh, one of you guys said it earlier, just no rhythm. Uh, we – and then maybe that's attributed to the Lions – I mean, I'm sorry, to the Bears' defense. You know, they do have a pretty good defense, um, and they played pretty well. Robert Quinn and Khalil Mack, um, you know, kept constant pressure. And that's one thing – That's I should have said that as well. But um, we didn't we didn't keep enough pressure on uh, on Justin Fields the entire game we had an dispersed or you know a play here a play there but it wasn't just you know enough to me but um they surely got enough pressure on um on jared golf uh we got a couple of injuries with well, a big injury ragnar was told like have you guys heard anything about that like what's going on with that have not yeah. yet no nah, not, as, um, not as foot yeah not yet i was looking forward to the uh to the hawk and uh and uh smith matchup um wasn't a good one for us uh i don't it's I don't know. We don't, I feel like we honestly just don't use Hawk enough right now. And I don't know if that's a, you know, maybe if you start, you know, I don't want to put that out in it. I don't want to put the energy out there, you know, more usage, then more opportunities for whatever to happen. But mm -hmm. I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I understand we we had to go away from the run game because, you know, we're getting scored on and you got to score points, but at certain points you should probably still use it because it was working. You know, we, we, DeAndre Swift, to me, didn't have a great game. I um, mean, you know, he had a – he's still young, so he had a, you know, a, a game that young players can have. But Jamal Williams was having a much better game. He was the hot hand. I remember, you know, hearing that quote, we're going to ride the hot hand, and they didn't. Like, it was, you know, it was like, okay, we got to get Swift going, and it was just – that was, like, pretty much where our offensive momentum would, would wane in, in most points. Um, I don't know. Um, if To give some – because there were some positives. Um, some positive is <laughs> um, we didn't get our first penalty until like it was 50 seconds left in the first half. Um, due yeah, to turnovers, we did this time. <laughs> right. Um, due to turnovers, we didn't really have we didn't have our first punt until 45 seconds left in the first half. So we couldn't move the ball in the first half. We had three drives inside the 10. Um, I don't know. It, it was we didn't put enough things, good things together in a row. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, look at this offense. Um, one thing kind of stood out for me to me is that this was the first game that Panay Sewell looked like a rookie. He looked like a rookie he did. on the Sunday. Rookies he, look he like did. a rookie. Yeah. yeah, he looked like he had a he had a rookie game. It was a definitely a letdown game for Sewell. Mm -hmm. Not to say he played bad the whole game, but there were some mistakes. You know, some pressures mm -hmm. let in by Panay mm -hmm. Sewell. So I was like, eh. So. Um, I definitely was looking forward to getting <laughs> Taylor Decker back hopefully real soon uh, if, if this continues. But I can't give his whole season to one game. So Panesu will look like a rookie. Hopefully he can recover yeah. from this game and uh, move him forward. Um, that defensive that, line is good, though. Yeah, that defensive line is definitely good. My bright spot was there was really a drop off when Evan Brown came in to play center though. He played center pretty yeah. well. Yeah, he it wasn't did. like really let down with that. So he was my bright spot, you know, definitely on, on the offensive side of the ball, too many mistakes, especially that. I don't know what that we talked about it earlier. I don't know what that snap was between Frank Ragnow and I don't know what he was because you're the center, you know, the snap count, you should know the difference between calling out of protection and you know him him saying to snap the ball you know you know the snap count you know protection calls because you're the center because you relate a snap the the protection calls to the rest of the offensive line so i don't i didn't I don't understand what that blunder was too many trips into the red zone too many trips inside the 10 and no points for it inexcusable um bad play calling and mm -hmm. you know it was just one of those things where it was just 
Um, and then Jared Goff was just missing throws and just missing throws and just missing short arming throws, short hopping throws, uh, long, you know, overthrowing. Overthrows. Yeah, Khalif mm -hmm. Raymond was like wide open, just overshot him. I'm like, come on, man. And yep. that was the probably my one guy who, you know, he, he had a definitely was another bright spot was Khalif Raymond, but it was just a overall, just a total crap show on the offensive side of the ball for most of the game. So my, it's, it's that's all I can say about that, Jim. What you got? My take on the offense was uh, why did we go away from Jamal Williams so quickly? I mean, he was eating. I mean, he was, you hand him the ball, he was getting five to, it seemed like he was getting five or 10 yards. I don't want to get bottled up every once in a while, but every running back does. But man, he was, he was playing really well. And, and all this talk about DeAndre Swift being the starter and he's earned carries and what happened to that again? I, I don't know. It, it, this whole game plan just looked off to me. It, it was yeah. like, did Swift get hurt again? Is there something behind the scenes we don't know about? Because everything Campbell said didn't really come to pass, in my opinion. It, we, we abandoned the run too much. We relied on Jared Goff, which we never should do ever. Um, I'm not going to run the guy out of town, but when you tell me this guy's a winner and he's 0-4, you tell me he's won playoff games. He's been to the Super Bowl. Stafford never did that. And I'm like, you know what? We're not going to go back to the whole Stafford thing. That's old news. It's over. He's gone. But the quarterback we have now will not do. We have to upgrade at the quarterback position when we can. I know this is a rebuild. I know it's a rebuild year, and I'm not looking forward. To, I'm not. I'm not saying maybe this year, but if you've got a Deshaun Watson out there, and I know he's got a laundry list of bad things going on, but the Lions always have to have choir boys, and maybe it's time that we take a shot at something that isn't that. Because if you do the things that you've done, and keep repeating them. That's the definition of crazy, folks. Definitely. Yeah, and expecting different results. Yeah, mm -hmm. insanity. That's exactly uh, yeah. definitely what that is. Hey, if you like the video, share the video, comment on the video. You know, it's helped us get this content to more Alliance fans just like yourself. And it's Manscaped Mondays. Hey, go over to manscaped.com and use the code DLOTP to get free shipping mm -hmm. and to get 20% off your purchase at manscaped.com. I'm telling you that lawn, that, that weed eater, you know, go in there and get the nose hairs, the ears hairs. And like I said, that deodorant mm -hmm. works wonders on your undercarriage people. So go over there and get yourself some manscape. You know, uh, like the shirt says, you know, yo, yo, uh, yo, jewels will definitely thank you if you take care of them over <laughs> there at manscaped.com. Yeah, All right. You got so the tools for your jewels. All right. Yeah, got the tools for your jewels. All right. So now it's time for. The boss up, ball out players of the week, and the players who got balled on <laughs> in, in this game. So, all right. So, boss up and ball out players uh, for me, definitely, I will have to say, on the offensive side of the ball, I got to go with my man, Khalif Raymond. Two touchdowns, really good game, was getting wide open. Uh, he is my boss up player on the offense. On the defensive side of the ball, uh, she, I got to go with Aline McNeil. I mean, there was not a lot of bright spots on their defense, but he played well in the middle between him and Charles Harris. Those two, uh, you know, are mixed into my boss up and ball out players of the game. My balled on players of the game, you know, they just got whooped. How long is this list? No, I'm just kidding. It's real <laughs> long, but I'm, I, I have to repeat this. It's got to be Anthony Lynn wasn't even a player. It was an offensive coordinator. He got out coached by the defensive coordinator by the Bears, just flat out, just whooped. So uh, he just had a horrible game, and he did not put our players in a in a position to succeed. Play calling was ferocious. It was terrible. He needs to go back to the drawing board. Um, you know, I don't know what's what, what's going on in that head of his, but we got to do something different. So those are my boss up ball out players and got balled on players for me. All right, Jim, who's your boss up ball out players and who got balled on yesterday for the okay, Detroit Lions? I, it's, it's hard because I don't want to go with the same ones. So mm -hmm. uh, that that's difficult because offensively I've got, I've, I've got Jamal Williams. I thought Jamal Williams had a darn good game. They decided not to give him the ball after a while, which was a great decision and all. But you got one yard, let's throw it instead of give it to somebody who's averaging, yeah, whatever. I won't even go into it. But that that guy I really liked. Uh, defensively, oh, jeez, this is rough. <laughs> <laughs> the only guy I thought of was Charles Harris, but 
I, I'm telling you the truth. Uh, really not, not a whole lot to look forward to on that. Okay. So the bald on it's Jared Goff. It, it, that dude was terrible. Just for me, terrible. The, the yards he got, you want to call garbage time. Every time you talk about Stafford stats, well, there was a lot of garbage time in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, that's the way I feel. I feel like when, it, when the pressure was on and it was up to him, he screwed it. He found a way to screw it up. He just, I mean, terrible player. Uh, defensively, I've got to go with, uh, let me see, Will Harris. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can you please get someone? And we mentioned this before the season started that the safety position was going to be a problem, mm-hmm. right? I, I did at least. And you know what? It's a problem. <laughs> it's a big problem. But anyway, those are my those are my guys. I'm just going to go with those two. I don't want to take I don't want to take everybody for LL. <laughs> All right, yeah. LL, who, who you got? Boss up, balled out, and who got balled on, my dude? Um, my boss up player for this week. I'm going to go with Quintez Cephas, as I like to call him, big play Cephas. We didn't get too many big plays out of him, but I picked him. It's just uh, he didn't he wasn't shook like he, you know, in a, in the game that we was having, True. you know, everything was going wrong or however it was, you know, people making mistakes, people not looking like, you know, like, come on, you know, it, nobody was really going hard. You know, anytime you get a catch, you get up, you screaming in somebody's faces. I, he never shook. He's ready for the moment. He probably should get more opportunities. Um, uh, honorable mention, if I can, real quick, is uh, we got some. We got a Sun guy sighting. I like his production. He got a couple looks. That's what happens when you actually give him the ball. You know, he was he had, he had a couple uh, penalties as well, but he's just an aggressive player. I, I really like that from him. Um, our uh, <laughs> our balled on players or player of this week. I'm gonna just say our defense, man. We just didn't. No, we yeah, didn't. We I didn't. We that. didn't play well. Um, we didn't. We just didn't look together. You know how they say you gotta, uh, you gotta know what the other guys doing. Move with cohesion and move on one string. All of the superlatives, all of the euphemisms, whatever it is, we didn't do any of that. We just looked bad. Um, and against that team, it was just that was the reason why I felt so strong about it. It's like, all right, Chicago can go out there and look that bad. I don't think we are Cleveland at all. But you know what I'm saying? Is if they if they can look that bad, they can look bad again. Let's help them to do it, and we didn't. So. And honorable mention is for uh, bought on. I just uh, I agree with uh, whoever said Anthony Lynn. I don't remember at the moment, but Anthony Lynn. <laughs> yeah, that was Kurt. Yeah, yeah, that that was my <laughs> that was me. <laughs> okay, hey, that's your boss ball out player. So who got bought on for the week versus Chicago Bears? You like the video? Share the comment. Hey, subscribe to the channel. It's free. It's free, free. And if you need some more free, it's free ninety nine and fifty three cent. So go over and click the subscribe button and join Proud Nation. We need you. Come on, be part of this family right here for Detroit Lions on the Proud. We need you on this March to 10,000. This is like Jim says, this is important for us right here on the show. And, you know, just be part of it's part of the crew. And, you know, it's Manscaped Monday. So go over and to get yourself some Manscaped products at manscaped.com. Use the current promo code DLOTP to get 20% off your purchase and free shipping over there at manscaped.com. <laughs> so it's just a, it's just a, a, a bad, bad uh, feeling today. Uh, we just we, we're feeling it right now, you know, because we're fans we are. like you guys. We are. And I, we're feeling it. It's rough for us today. Uh, but now it is time for dessert with your man, Kurt, brought to you by Delightful Bites Cookies um, Custom Desserts. Let's go to the comment cards first, baby. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. It's time for me to hush <laughs> and go to the comment. That's how bad it is today. And it let's is, tell you what you let's let's Monday. zip our lip and see what you had to say uh, about the uh, Fridays and uh, Thursday show. So, Jim, you up first with the comment cards. Thank you for saving my butt today. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I've had it all morning long. It's been like this. Uh, galloping Lake Six, and you know what? I got to say this first. We, we can't wait for the comments tomorrow. Let me let me oh, tell you. Yeah. It's going <laughs> to be a nice one. It's going to be fun. Galloping Lake Six, the Bears are a better defense than the Ravens, and the Ravens shown how to neutralize Hawkinson by double coverage and heavy blitzes to force him to block. I see the Bears winning this game. Well, Nostradamus, you are correct. Definitely. <laughs> 
Definitely. Uh, Aishan Weaver, I think is how you say it. Aishan Weaver, uh, I have to ask this question to you guys. Love the content first and foremost. Hey, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Should we just move on and trade Flowers? I'm thinking we could get a second and third rounder. Not sure of the cap hit, uh, but the dude is injured every year for 90 millions. Would you like to see him playing more? Uh, can't play more if you're injured, but uh, I think that cap hit would be pretty we've taken some pretty big cap hits already i don't know if we can take another cap hit to get rid of him uh, i think he leaves in the off season i, yeah, I, think, I think they make a deal season. for him in the off season or something i it's yeah. too big of a hit right now yeah too big of a hit right now yeah yeah um jeremy ballrich is that is this our uh, smoking smoking jeremy. jeremy yes it is this is uh smoking jeremy um our friend of the show that is usually on on um free or free south friday free for all friday says uh, DeAndre Swift is the third running back in Lions history to have a thousand yards from scrimmage in 15 games with 10 TDs. He joined Billy Sims and Barry Sanders as the only Lions running backs to do it. So let's good not stat. use that guy. Oh. Yeah, good stat. Yeah. Let's uh, let's figure out how to make it work more. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and so what I what I said there was uh, let's not use him then. Um, <laughs> right. No, that's <sighs> the strategy that we use. Right. Just yeah, uh, I'm so mad. Uh, the Rona ninety nine. Go have some fun and start looking. Uh, <laughs> start and start fooling around with PFN's twenty two draft site. My QB choice is Desmond Ritter of Cincy. With a pick in the sixties or so, with trades available, you can move back and have a nice uh, four or five player haul in the first seventy picks or so. Um, I. I yeah, I don't know if I'm looking at a quarterback in this year's draft coming up, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, we probably will get the number one pick, so we'll have our choice. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, Wally Ru- uh, Ravula says uh, the coaching staff needs to get off the fourth and short tries, Ooh. kick the damn field goal, Ooh. or punt the damn ball. Uh, turning the ball over on downs is stupid. I'm I give too much momentum. I give too much momentum mm-hmm. to, into the opponent, and football is a game of momentum. Mm-hmm. Like I said, you wow, he was seeing it in his crystal ball. Holy yeah, I, you're looking at this. Uh, you just leave too many points on the board, especially down in the red zone. If you you getting close enough, just kick take kick the point, kick the field goal, take the points. I think it was like about I, like I think like I said, I think it was about either six or nine points we kind of left on the board down there in the red zone where we could have been a, it been a closer game and we could have had a chance to win. Jerry, or Jerry Benson says, is hand size important? Yes, it is. To which golf just scoff. I just heard about that yesterday. I've been told that I have pretty big hands my whole life. I've never had a problem with that and I don't expect to be a problem. At, and I don't expect it to be a problem at all. It, it wasn't. Two, it wasn't two years later. Golf has golf had led the Rams to the Super Bowl. David Fleming, ESPN senior writer. Why the NFL Combine built the myth around quarterback hand size, a measurement that doesn't mean anything. February 25th, 2020. Okay. Um, well, thanks we for that, Jeremy three Benson. times this week, so I don't know. I yeah, mean, I don't, I don't even know if the fumbles had to do with his hand size. <laughs> yeah, it's just wet. Oh. You know, it's just a wet ball. That's, I mean, I, don't I, know think, he... I think this week was just him just fumbling the day. I mean, him just being you got to look at the strip was one. Uh, one got stripped and fell right back into his hands but then the one i can't blame him on the one with ragnall that thing that was ragnall yeah that wouldn't that that should be a tribute that should be ragnall's fumble because he snapped the ball before it was supposed to be snapped yeah but just as if no go ahead go my bet no i'm just saying he just snapped and he just hit him in the chest i mean i I can't call i can't say that's a fumble on jared goff but those other two yeah i don't care what your hand size is just hang on to the damn ball yeah that's my point just whatever it is don't let it go like that. Yeah, it's something, and I don't know what it is because he had problems with turnovers o- over there. And uh, to, to, I, to be honest, I still think that's the reason McVay got rid of him. But um, anyway, that's just my take. You don't you don't sit here and give up two first round picks and a third and then just throw in Jerry to get rid of a guy. And, yeah, yeah. They okay, like sucker, sucker. <laughs> 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 All right. Now we found out what you had to say. Now we're going to go to my favorite part of the show to the dessert with my man, Kurt. All right. So dessert with your man, Kurt, is brought to you by Delightful Bites Cookies, custom cookies and desserts for any occasion. The football special for the season is still going on Four football, four logos and four helmets of your favorite team. Um, 
I don't know if you can buy any Detroit Lions this week, but for $35, <laughs> uh, pretty good size cookies. They taste great. They're, uh, they're ship fresh, uh, wrap fresh cellophane, uh, really good cookies. Pop them in the microwave when you get them, and they're really good. So sweeten up your football viewing experience with some Delightful Bites cookies. Delightful Bites, get your cookie on. Now, the one bright spot in yesterday's game or for the offensive side of the ball is that we actually could move the ball. So we need to do more of that. So, Anthony Lynn, my call to action to you is for this delightful bites, you know, dessert, which you make her is continue to find success and move the ball. And whatever you're doing, go ahead and do that when you get in the red zone so we can get in the end zone. I'm just saying defenses are going to tighten up. So you have to do what's got you there. So do what got you there. Get this ball and get the ball in the end zone and keep moving. But I, that was the one thing that was promising for me yesterday was we actually moved the ball. We got the ball up and down the field. We just couldn't get in the end zone. So the bright spot for me is that what, however bad Jared Goff is and however bad the other things are doing, we could get the ball down the field. Uh, and we just need to put some points on the board. So that's my dessert with your man, Kurt, brought to you by Delightful Bites. Delightful Bites, get your cookie on. Final thoughts for today is we are in hell. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and on to Minnesota. <laughs> just, just, this is 0-4, uh, and we, we didn't expect them to be good this year, but we did expect them to – continue to progress. This was not a progression game. This, this was a regression game. This was probably the worst they've played this year, in my opinion. And uh, it's a crushing blow for a, for a game that we felt we could win. And that's what's so bad. If we went in there and we were playing, you know, teams that are really good. And I, I got to caveat this because the Baltimore Ravens had 15 people on the DL and they had four or five people on COVID list. So they weren't the real Ravens. You know, and there were some injuries with the Packers, too, even though they did have Aaron Rodgers and they, and they did have their good players, Devontae Adams and stuff. But the thing is, is it, this team, it, it may be really, really bad. We, we don't know, but it, it, it's looking like um, that all the people that were saying we were going to be so bad may be right. I don't want that to happen. But keep your chin up, guys. This is the first year of a build, and it, it, it's not always going to go right. You know, things are going to go wrong. Every, like I said, first year head coach. You know, uh, as in, you know, his team and all that. I think that there's just a lot of things that are going to go on uh, during this season that are going to be growing pains, and and not everyone is going to get it right every single game. Please, let's, I mean, I, I know I criticize golf a lot, but. You know, we got to stay true to 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 our head coach and our, you know, our staff, those things, you know, it's, it's learning on the go for them, too. So, like I had said in the beginning of this whole season, these are the reasons why this wasn't going to be an 11 win team. And uh, we kind of expected that. So that's my final thoughts for today. I don't want to go on and on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Go ahead. Hello. No problem. No problem. Uh, my final thoughts for today. Um, you know, this was a – if I could use that phrase, this is a shit game, let's flush it and get over it, man. That's the only best way to look at it. There, I know I said there was no positives. There was some positives. Uh, we were averaging third and short on third down every third. It was like third and three or something like third and 3.3. So manageable third and shorts. Um, we just got to take care of fourth down. Um, we held them at one point um, all the way up into the third quarter, one for six in, on third down. So I don't – it's just – a couple things we missing, man. So that's, I guess, you know, to the my final, or if I can send a message, uh, just like you just said to the coaching staff, whoever it is, just uh, stick with it. It's we still right there. Um, I've come down off my ten wins, but I still, I definitely could see seven. You know, what I'm saying five to seven for sure. And um, next game, uh, Vikings, man, let's go, let's go beat the Vikings, man, let's go kick them in the ass. Okay, <laughs> All right, my thoughts for the day. Um, you dig a hole, you put the tape uh, in there, you burn it. Uh, and then you cover it up, and then you put a stick of dynamite in there and blow the whole damn thing up again. So <laughs> that's what my thing is. So get rid of all the remnants of the tape, you know, like I said, and you just move on, uh, and you get ready for Minnesota. That's all you can do at this point. Uh, we've had our, you know, woo side moment. We got our, our negative thoughts out of there. We, yep. you know, we express our dis disappointment in the game, and we've got to move on because 
if you dwell in negativity, your outlook is going to be negative for a very long time and you cannot yep. afford to do that. So that's my final thoughts for today. Uh, so we, we take take what we can out of it and just keep moving on. So let's take a stroll on over to that wall of fame, baby. Hey, you know, we got to highlight our people. Yes, yes. The bronze members, we have D. Troy Drew, Midwest Lion, the Latino Leo, Brian Stover, Bo Gagri is Justin. Man, I needed a beer yesterday, 10K. We have <laughs> Sam <laughs> and Robert, Subs, He Trap City Boys, Entertainment, Crystal, Wiley, Bubba, Bo, John Kapler, Art Allen, the Flintstone himself, Mr. Generous, Jim Bo G. Definitely is in the building. David Anderson and the man, the myth, who is everything. Everything King is on that bronze member list. We have our service members. We have No Miss J, Jason Portis, Cap Ice Cold. I see you over there in that Lions Nation Unite, Cap Ice. The signal is in the air for the Batman of the 313. And hell, we need you right now to come save us. All right. We have John Martin, the F5 tornado is blowing through the building. And we have uh, blew Mr. through the Scotty building the yesterday Bear. for sure. <laughs> yeah, he was blowing. They were blowing through our office. <laughs> Mr. Scotty the Bear, the Frenchman, baguettes <laughs> and all that good stuff. <laughs> and we have go Lions. All right, for our gold members, we have Mr. Reliable himself, Michael Huck, just in the D, Pride 74, Doug Prince 72, the inspirational Turner C. Burley, Dominic Davis, Larry McQuiston, Bob oh, Karowski, Big Ferg is in the building. Matthew Ferguson, you know, he writes those great articles for us over there on Detroit Lions on the proud.com. Randall Flag 606, Miles Gibbs, the Gridiron Blitz, Mr. Rough and Raw himself, North and Ken, baby. Stay safe on those roads, my dude. And the doctor, Dr. Detroit is always, always in. in. To become a member of the Wall of Fame, click the Join Now button in the description or the Lions on the Prowl logo at the bottom of the screen. Now, this one is not free. You got to pay. It's a little bit of change to get on the Wall of Fame. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's not that much. <laughs> okay, we had our negativity for a day. To be honest with you, it, it was a terrible, terrible game. And guess what? It's time to move on. It's time to end the show, end the negativity, and let's move on to, to beating them Vikings up in Minnesota. Go ahead, let's kick it to Kurt to end the show. Hey, you know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the Prowl. Your home for Detroit Lions news and rumors. And it's Manscaped Monies. Go over to manscaped.com. Use the code DLOTP to get 20% off your purchase and free shipping right there on that site. Hey, they got the tools for your jewels. So, like you said, you got to get that deodorant. Uh, and Jeez, like the shirt doing? says, <laughs> hey, it's your 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 man parts would definitely thank you over there at manscaped.com. Hey, go over and check us out, Detroit Lions on the Prod.com. Matthew Ferguson has got some great articles over there. And it's just some good content right over there. And click on the link for definitely Lions on the Prod shop.com. Get yourself some Proud Nation gear. You know, you see that kneecap body shirt over Jim's shoulder and you know it's more and more stuff over there to get you got cups mugs bags anything get yourself some proud nation gear over on lions on the prowl shop.com if you get yourself some lions gear you know for the rest of the season yeah, and, you oh, know I'm, I'm rocking that sideline hat shirt right now go over to fanatics.com and get yourself some gear the salute to service gear is now up or the critical catch gear you know the, to uh support cancer awareness is over there up on fanatics.com right now hey i'm gonna tell you the fan cash works i got a free i pretty much got my uh salute to service shirt coming for free with the fan yeah. cash over at fanatics.com so go over there sign up for the fan cash rewards and you get so much more what you got jim one thing i was gonna say is logan uh from the we are alliance nation purchased a uh, uh, a Hawkamania Hulk, uh, Hulk Hulk shirt from us, and I really appreciated that. Thank you, man. Hey, thanks. We really appreciate that. Good looking out. Uh, hey, you know, and go over and check out Lions Nation Unite. If you haven't been over there, and join that app. I don't know what you're waiting on because it's the ultimate so much party. It's the ultimate virtual hangout for Detroit Lions fans. And we have content over there. Our content's over there. We got some separate content over there. And one thing that's over there is the latest Die Hard Dan featuring the Detroit Lions on the Prowl crew. It's posted right over there. I had the boys on yesterday. We hung out and I appreciate 
all my fellas right here on this show coming over and hang out on my other show man thanks guys i really appreciate it shout out to tim and big fur for coming over and hanging out and we had that negativity yesterday <laughs> well that game but what it's can you over. do all you gotta do is talk about it and move on hey it's monday so the grind starts today right so you know you're gonna grind it out you're gonna get this negativity behind us onto minnesota and you know you got to wipe off those crumbs from your face mm. get back to work and whatever you do in life you got the boss up ball out and be the best version of you that you can be for my fellas jim and ll this is kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real soon